My mother's scent is just like air. Her absence for me is despair. Where is the grave of Zahra? Yes, where is the grave of Zahra? The infant, when its mother leaves, even if it's for a moment, starts panicking and despairing, searching for where its mother went. And for over a thousand years, wherever my mother I want, for over a thousand years, whenever my mother I want, they tell me her grave is missing. And I despair and I lament. One thousand years I've been searching. My age to end is refusing. For her absence I tire. Where is the grave of Zahra? Since the birth of our existence, every man searches for heaven. Sailing to the ends of the earth, searching every land and ocean. But I know what my heaven is, even though somewhere it's hidden. She lies veiled by seven skies, weeping over a rib broken. My tears yearn to soothe her scars. In her absence, dying are stars. I search further and further. Where is the grave of Zahra? Where is the grave of Zahra? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The birth of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam will ask the question of who was the mother of Fatima Zahra and who was the father of Fatima Zahra. As we know, the father of Fatima Zahra is none other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we will cover tonight or we will cover this session speaking about Lady Khadija in four interesting facts. Number one, she was a successful and esteemed businesswoman. Number two, she turned down many marriage proposals. Number three, she asked the Prophet to marry her. And number four, she was the first Muslim. A successful and esteemed businesswoman. You see, Khadija was born to a father who was a successful merchant in the Quraysh tribe of Mecca. She inherited her father's skills in a time in history where society was male-dominated and often is the time it was dangerous. Upon her father's death, she took over the business and traded goods through primary commerce uh, and through primary commerce centers at the time, from Mecca to Syria and all the way to Yemen, hiring the most trustworthy men of character and nobility because those trade routes were often riddled with dangers. And so therefore, not only did she hire the most trustworthy men, but she also hired those who were brave. Her business was larger than all of the Quraysh tribes combined. And the most acclaimed, she was the most acclaimed with the reputation of fair dealing and high quality goods. She had a keen eye on, uh, and was very highly in, in, intuitive in business, earning the earning her the, the titles within the people as Amir at Quraysh, the princess of Quraysh, and Al Tahira, which is very significant. Al Tahira, the pure one, right? So, due to her stellar reputation, Khadija knew what she was doing business wise. Okay, she never ever compromised on her modesty or integrity to succeed in the male dominated trade routes, hiring only those, as I mentioned that could meet these standards. Point number two, she turned down many marriage proposals. Now, of course, being the most successful woman in Arabia at the time, she gathered a lot of interest from those successful businessmen. And of course, being the most successful woman around, rich in worldly attainment as well as character, it seems Khadija faced a consistent campaign of men seeking her hand in marriage. Now, her keen sense of character left her often very picky. Point number three, she asked the Prophet to marry her. Now, Khadija learned of the stellar reputation of the Prophet Muhammad. She also learned of his experience when it comes to managing caravans and trade routes whilst the Prophet accompanied his uncle Abu Talib. So she hired him into her conglomerate. Marriages at this time were typically necessary for a couple of different reasons, for survival, for example, um, and sometimes not only about love. 
So Khadija didn't need necessarily a husband to take care of her financially. She fell in love with the Prophet and through a friend asked to marry the Prophet. That's point number three. Point number four, she was the first Muslim. Now Khadija, the mother of Islam, was the first person on earth to accept Muhammad as the final Prophet of God and accept the revelations that culminated into the Holy Quran. She was greeted with salam, peace, by God himself as well as the angel Gabriel. Uh, and she bequeathed uh, worldly gods and put herself in the face of danger to stand by the Prophet Muhammad السلام, or the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as Islam became established in the land. So in conclusion we can say that Khadija gave everything that she had towards Islam, towards the betterment of Islam. She used anything that she had of financial value to better the reputation and the image of Islam within a difficult world and a difficult context. So the least we can do, brothers and sisters, is to honor Khadija by also giving back, by way of writing, by way of even naming our daughters by her esteemed name. So not only did Khadija السلام, spend on Islam and the betterment of Islam, but she also spent her worldly riches on the poor. In Islam, whether rich or poor, one's financial condition is a test. Khadija gave her earnings to the poor, to the orphans, to the widows, and to the sick. She helped poor girls get married and provided their dowry. Khadija was one of history's most remarkable women. Prophet Muhammad once said that four, the four greatest women of mankind were Fatima, his daughter, Mary, the daughter of Imran, Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Pharaoh, and Khadija bint Khuwailid. Okay, so Khadija continues to inspire people to this day who revere her for taking great care of the Prophet of Islam and for showing the world through her behavior what a pious, modest, and courageous woman uh, can accomplish in that day and in this day as well. An example she left for mankind remains timeless. Glory be to the Lord of Worlds, whose anger became her anger, Fatima's anger. If those who anger God perish, then what of those who anger her? If they say no house was burnt down and none hated her, we answer when they're buried by Muhammad, where is the grave of his daughter? Why did Fatima die angry? Why was taken in chains Ali? Fadak was taken from her. Where is the grave of Fatima? Along with the grave of Zahra, there's an absence upon my eye. Mahdi, you know where her grave is. Whilst to us it's lost, tell us why. We'll build her a shrine that bends earth, minarets that would pierce the sky. In our millions with you, Master, by her grave, we'll lament and cry. Against those that hated her tears, we'll cry rivers for months and years. And we'll mourn her forever. Where is the grave of Zahra? And we'll mourn her forever. Where is the grave of Zahra?